Okay, I'm looking to make this video with regard to increasing the power output of my CP88. A spoiler alert, if you don't wish to watch the entire video, uh, the net result was marginal, uh, if any. Uh, but if you do want to watch the entire video, please go through it. I'll show you some of the modifications that I've done to try and increase the power. Um, unfortunately, like I say, the net gain uh, wasn't there, but it may be helpful to anyone that is thinking of doing that. Uh, so please, no negative comments at the end. Um, I've given you uh, an upfront idea of what the video contains. Uh, enjoy. Hi YouTube. Um, it's been a while since I've done a video, so this is another video from My Boys Toys. Um, and today I'm going to see if I can improve the uh, performance of my CP88. Uh, I've done a lot of uh, views online to see how people have improved the performance of their CO2 powered pistols. Uh, there's not an awful lot of information as to how to do it so uh, I will try and take you through a process I think may work. I'll first off uh, sh go by showing uh, what it's currently producing on my Chrono, um, do the modifications uh, and show you the step-by-step -step process that I'm going to go through and then we'll uh, do another chrono test just to see if there's been any improvement at all. So stay tuned and we'll see what happens. Okay, so we've got a brand new cartridge um, in the gun. Uh, just gonna try and get a few shots across it just to see what we're getting on the chrono. Okay, we'll try a second cartridge. Okay, so there's a number of shots across there, and so 289 and 352, so it's quite a spread there as the, uh, as the CO2 goes down. So let's take the highest figure uh, of 352.9 being our, uh, our highest uh, uh, feet per second recording. Uh, we'll do some modifications and see where we go. Okay, so we've now got the gun apart. Uh, I won't go through the full video of how to do that. There are videos online that actually show you uh, in detail how that's done. Um, do bear in mind there is uh, a number of components to this, uh, some very small and can easily be lost. Uh, most notably you get um, little ball bearings that are used as stops uh, with regards to the um, locking mechanism for the safety and also the release for the sliding chamber. Again, you get a small, uh, I can just show you in there, uh, ball bearing. They ping out if you're not careful uh, and you'll be looking for those for hours. Uh, so do be careful when you take it apart. If you're not confident, then don't do it. Uh, I should also add that anything you do do to your gun is entirely at your own discretion. Uh, I'm not here to show you uh, any instruction on what to do. This is purely what I'm doing to mine. Uh, if I break it, uh, if I damage it, or if it's irreparable, uh, that's something that I take on uh, my own responsibility. So, um, how are we going to increase the power? Well, there's uh, a number of ways that I believe it could be done. Um, one would be to increase the power spring here. So, as the uh, hammer comes back and hits the pin inside the uh, gas chamber, the, uh, the gas is actually sort of held here in the small pin that pierces the capsule. Uh, this holds the, the gas uh, and the pin releases it, so you get a small jet of uh, gas come through. Uh, which fires the pellet. So the harder the spring hits, um, hopefully the uh, the more gas that you can actually get to escape 
um, from the chamber. Uh, the problem being, I think, on these is that that spring is going to be quite difficult to replace. So uh, I'm going to leave that as it is, uh, and we'll concentrate on uh, making some adjustments inside this chamber and uh, what we'll do there to try and increase uh, performance at this point here. Uh, so the next part of the video will go into this and how we go on with that. Okay, so we've got the valve out. Um, it was housed uh, there, there's two parts to it. Um, but this main body is what we're concentrating on. Uh, essentially, what we've got is uh, a couple of parts to it. Uh, a head, uh, I had to make a small tool, um, as you can see here, just to get it in there and over the top of the, the valve uh, striker so I could turn it and unscrew it. There's a little bit of uh, resistance on the spring. You've got the valve itself, uh, which fits into the main body, uh, a spring, which keeps the valve under tension, and the chamber, which has got an O-ring and is also what looks like a small brass uh, washer at the bottom as well. The simple process behind this is the spring keeps the piston or the, the, the valve under tension. The hammer strikes this. As it does so, there's a couple of holes, which you may be able to see in the top, which allow the gas to pass under, through them, forcing it down the centre of the valve, uh, which obviously releases the gas out. The spring comes back, seals against the head there, which uh, as you can see just fits in, seals against the head, the chamber then refills with gas, waiting for the next shot. Again, hammers struck, valve releases, gas passes through these small holes, down the main centre, forcing gas uh, behind the pellet, and away you go. So, how can we get some more power out of it? Well, one of the things that I think could potentially be done is to put a weaker spring in. Uh, the weaker spring should allow uh, the strike to be harder and less resistance against the valve. With luck, what that will then do is actually create more gas into the through the pass through the valve, and therefore more gas behind the pellet. That's because it's certainly one way of doing it, uh, which I will try. Uh, the other thing that I'm looking to do as well is the holes that are here obviously are restricting the amount of gas that you can get through in that split second when the, 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 the plunger is struck. What could potentially be done, uh, and again this is the, the second part of what I will do, is slightly widen the holes on both sides, not by much because I don't want to sort of weaken the integrity of the valve, but, uh, but certainly try and increase a little bit more uh, gas flow. So again, more gas flow behind the valve, a weaker spring creating less resistance against the hammer strike, which should in turn create more gas behind the pellet. That's the theory and we'll give it a go, see what I can do and we'll come back and uh, put it on the chrono and see what happens. Okay, so I've got a drill bit on my Dremel, uh, which is just slightly larger than the holes that I'm uh, are going through. I'm going to go very gently into the valve and just seeing if I can just ream a slightly larger hole in the valve. Uh, what I've also done off camera is uh, I've, t I've got a much lighter spring. Uh, I'll be honest, I don't know where it's come from. I've just found it amongst a load of parts. It fits very snugly over the valve. Uh, and it has, and I've flared the end slightly uh, because it's just a little bit uh, less diameter than the original spring, and I don't want it to uh, poke out the end of the uh, the housing. So uh, I'll show what it looks like when it's all together, and we're going to give this a go now to see if I can ream those holes a little bit wider. Okay, so um, back inside, uh, as you can see, I've reamed the holes as carefully as I could. Um, obviously one thing to bear in mind is that you don't want to damage this lip because obviously that is what seals uh, against this o-ring here so when you're doing it um, be, just be careful not to create uh, any uh, imperfection on that lip because obviously then you're going to be losing gas um, as mentioned I've got a weaker spring 
Uh, we'll see if this works. Uh, there's no guarantee that it'll actually have enough resistance. But what I'm uh, what I'm thinking is that once the chamber is full of gas, there is a natural uh, pressure holding it against this seal. So realistically, all this spring is doing is uh, adding weight to the hammer strike and putting the uh, valve back into place. And when the gas comes back in behind the valve, it forms a seal again. So with luck, uh, whilst this is a much weaker spring, uh, it should do the job. I've also flared the, this end of it. Uh, so what uh, it should do is now fits roughly the same diameter as this spring. So when it's going back into the chamber, it's not, uh, it's not falling through the hole in the end. We'll see what happens. Let's bring it back together and, uh, and see where we go. The valve is now back together. I've uh, tightened up the end with the, the tool that I made. Uh, the new spring is in it. And as you can see now, I'll try and use my other hand. As you can see now, that is easily pushed in with your finger. I can get my nail on it or my finger on it and it's pushing in. So the spring is a lot weaker than the original spring which we have here. Will this work? We'll try it and find out. Okay, so guns back together, cartridge in. Can't hear any gas escaping, which is uh, a great start. So let's put some across the chrono and see if all that work has paid off. So we're at 283 lowest, oh, 350 I think it said, I'll cycle through that, 283, so eight three, and the high was 353. Okay, so what have we learned? Uh, unfortunately, it looks like neither the lighter spring nor the increase in diameter of the valve apertures seems to have made any noticeable difference. The gun is still producing around about 2.3 foot pounds um, when you equate it to an 8.4 grain uh, pellet. So whilst I was hoping it'd be informative to increase power, maybe it's informative given the fact that while taking it apart and going through that process, um, unfortunately no noticeable difference has been gained. Hope this has helped and uh, see you on the next video.